Hey guys, Buddy Vintage here. Uh, sorry about the wide screen of the video. I haven't been able to figure out a good way to shoot a tall great coat uh, for YouTube yet, because it does widescreen. Obviously, torch would be better. I just wanted to show you um, kind of the difference in between an early war 1939 pattern great coat and a 1940 pattern great coat. Uh, the differences are very small. Um, but I've been sort of learning as I go. And again, I'm just a beginner, so this is more just for beginners like me to understand the general differences, as I'm sure a lot of experts out there could point out, you know, the different type of stitch used and different types of everything. Uh, so the general thing with the pattern 1940 at all, sorry, pattern 1939, I'll pull this up closer after you get a general shot, is at the back here, you'll notice just one seam going down. So that's what they had for the 1939 pattern. And the complaint was that this fit too tightly. There wasn't enough stretch to it, even though you could actually tuck in the belt. So if you disconnect this belt, there's actually hider holes in there and you can actually push the belt inside of the jackets, which I'll actually show you just while we're doing this. Um, that would allow for maximum expansion. So you go and you shove this inside, and I'm not gonna fully do it, but it'll actually shove inside there. So fit too tightly. So what they ended up doing, and I'll bring my other example over here, is the 1940 pattern. The main difference, I was gonna throw it right over because that's probably gonna be the easiest way to show you, is this pleat. So you notice this nice wide pleat all the way down and sort of this telltale triangle at the top. If you can sort of see that triangle right there, that's kind of just the stitch pattern. And that would allow for more expansion. And other, other than that, everything's the same. There's still the hider holes in here. Um, again, if you sort of go down lower, there's, you know, two buttons at the back of the 1940 and then 1939, the exact same. What I'll do is I'll just flip around this jacket to the front to sort of show you the general differences, but I haven't been able to find any. Uh, when you look inside, sorry, again, I wish this was just a portrait mode. I could just easily show you, but it's going to be a little bit difficult. I'll turn on my light. I've been sort of practicing this as I go to try and find the best way to show you guys all this. So I got my light going. So basically... It's got the, the neck extender. You actually take this piece off, connect it on the neck like that. Sorry, like that. So it has that. This is the 1939 pattern, just to reiterate. It's got the liner inside. This one is actually a 1941 dated um, large size, if you guys can see that. Again, this is why I hate filming with, uh, with a wide angle for something that's not meant to be. And it's actually 1941 pattern Canadian. Sorry, I shouldn't say 1941 pattern. 1941 dated 1939 pattern. Canada was sort of weird in the sense that they kept the 1937 pattern all the way through the war for the battle dress, for example. Um, so it looks like they kept the 1939 pattern great coat a little longer as well. Um, and other than that, it still has everything else that the 1940 pattern had. It still had little brass pieces to hook your necks together, um, brass buttons all the way through. Um, as you can see, the label has actually been removed, so I don't really know everything about the coat, except that one stamp. And yeah, that's sort of it in general. Uh, again, there was certain other things that they pointed out with the 1939 pattern that was improved with the 1940. The main thing is the expansion pleat, but there's apparently some you know jigger buttons. This is the 1940 jigger buttons also i believe the angles of this were cut a lot more horizontal as i've read i don't really see a whole lot of difference but i've seen that written about that these are cut at a different angle again i don't really see it but again there's probably a, a, quite a few examples out there 1939 patterns 1940 patterns that have more obvious differences than the ones i have Again, I got lucky with this one. It's got the brass buttons. Uh, again, this is missing 
the label as well and there's no stamping on it so all i know is that it's british uh again it's got the uh the neck piece as well it's got the liner inside uh it's got the the brass pieces for hooking up around your neck it's got these two so pretty much everything is pretty much the same later 1940 patterns used uh plastic buttons made of almost like this like vegetable oil composite um things so you'll find a lot of plastic on on 1940 patterns i got lucky having one with brass still uh for the war economy so those are really the general differences and again really the only one i've ever been able to find that really has any standardized across all patterns is the expansion pleat 1939 no expansion pleat 1940 pattern beyond expansion pleat so that's pretty much it and again you might run into a 1949 pattern which is post-war the easiest way to identify that is you're actually gonna have padding inside of here so you'll actually see it's almost like a golden um silk lining with actual like insulated padding um that you would mainly see in the uh in the korean war uh and beyond um so yeah that's it in general sorry about the crappy camera work but uh hopefully that just gives you a general idea of the differences